David, I'm delighted you're here with us from McLean's TV. And you know, you've you've travelled the world. You've done so many, uh, so many bag jobs for all the top professionals. But tell us here for McLean's TV, where did it all start? Well, I mean, for me now, it actually started. Um, I mean, if you wanted to get into caddying, like you know, you get out of the job that you're in, and the job that I was in was uh, actually it was for careers. It was like a cigarette factory down in Carrick, and. Um, Anyway, uh, they, they treated me very well, but I didn't treat them so well because uh, there was a football match. Northern Ireland were playing Israel in a, pre, a World Cup pre-qualifier. And I just asked them, like, listen, I want to go and see that match. You know, it was just on the big screen. It was, it was over in Israel. And they said, well, actually, no, we're, we're too busy, you know, so you can't. And I went, right, OK, well, I'll bring the match to me. So I smuggled a TV set in through um, security. Uh, through the you know the, the it was like a bonded warehouse you know yeah. so anyway I got to know those guys and I said I'm bringing a TV in tomorrow okay so they said ah, no problem so and I smuggled it in and I got it upstairs in, in the big warehouse you know okay so uh, checked it in good reception so then I went round yeah I'm busy busy look at me busy busy and then come the time when the match went up and at half time there must have been about fifty people watching this game <laughs> the noise is unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> so then I got caught on who brought that TV in. So anyway, they were pretty good. So they said, um, look, you've got two choices here. You can take voluntary redundancy or, or get fired. And I said, if I take voluntary redundancy, what does that mean? He says, well, we'll give you like 1,800 quid. And if we get fired, he said, well, you get nothing. I'll take voluntary redundancy. <laughs> so with that there, anyway, that was me over to America. And then we just started catting the ladies tour over there. I was always interested in golf. Always interested in golf. But you know, um, you, you you made a, a quantum leap there, going from uh, Belfast. You, you just you know upped and went to America. Like, well, I had a what kind did of, you do there? I had a little <clears throat> bit of a sideline though, because I, I, in those days they had these kind of persimmon woods. They don't have them anymore. So everything's metal. But in those days, in Florida, there was a guy called Joe Powell, and he made um, the you know some of the best persimmon woods. And I wanted to actually buy them and then bring them back to Ireland in the UK and sell them there, assemble them mm -hmm. back up again. But the uh, the business plan wasn't wasn't well laid at all. The the um, the, the dollar was parity with the pound. It was just made these things ridiculous. I, you know, back in Ireland, I said it was never going to work. But anyway, I had a meeting with uh, with a chap um, in uh, Deerfield in Florida, and it so happened it coincided with a, a ladies ladies event, an LPGA event, and so this lady didn't have a caddy, and she was looking around, you know, and I went. I'll caddy for you, <laughs> and that was me. And at the, at the end of the week, she missed the cut, and she said, "Would you caddy for me next week?" And I went, "Oh, where is it?" She said, oh, "We're down in Miami." And I had a car, you know, so I said, "Right, fair enough. I'll go down to Miami." And I worked for for about five weeks, but it was great. We ne we never ever saw Saturday. Never made the cut in anything. But mm. she liked me because I was so enthusiastic. 